What I'd like to do is introduce you to the model itself. CMMI, in this form, was developed from a series of models that were predecessors. There was a software CMM, there was a systems engineering CMM, there were many other models. And all of these models were developed out of pure quality principles that were that have been around for many, many years. Individuals like Deming, Duran, Crosby, all had similar experiences or similar uh, models focusing on the quality of products. But the products are focused, the focus of the quality of products is primarily equated to the quality of the process for developing the products. So there's a heavy, heavy emphasis in the CMMI model on process and what process means to a company and how good a process is. An interesting phenomena that I find when I work with executive managers is I ask them about the hardware assets that they purchase for their employees. Things like computers, desktops, laptops, networks, servers, on and on and on. And they easily can recommend or re recognize that those are assets to the company. The company purchases them, supports them, maintains them for the benefit of their people doing better work. So I immediately follow up with the question, do they consider their processes as assets? A process asset would be, for example, a good testing process or a good requirements development or management process. And it's interesting that many, many companies don't perceive process as a valuable asset to doing business. And that's what this series of uh, videos is all about, is to introduce you to how a focus on process will equate or help you deliver a, more a higher quality product within time, within budget. What I'd like to do is talk about the actual maturity levels inside CMMI. As you can see in the chart, there are five maturity levels using the CMMI staged representation. I'll explain the levels briefly. We have up here the process areas that, that reside at each maturity level. As you can see on the right side of the chart, the expectation is that as these process areas are implemented, product, productivity and quality go up and risk and rework go down. So let's go through the process areas one by one to just talk about the maturity levels that they're at. At level one, there are no process areas. At level two, basic project management, we have requirements management, project planning, project monitoring and control, supplier agreement management, measurement and analysis, process and product quality assurance, and configuration management. Those are the seven fundamental process areas at level two. At level three, we now have a, a number of new process areas that an organization implements, starting with requirements development, which is the engineering of requirements. Technical solution, product integration, that's designing and putting your product together. Verification and validation are two different process areas, primarily focusing on a testing type of uh, uh, area focus, <clears throat> but verification primarily focuses on are we building the thing right? Are we building it properly? Are we building it to the requirements? Validation is are we building it, are we building what the customer wants? Are we building the right thing? Organizational process focus is primarily a process improvement infrastructure that is put in place, it's an entity that becomes tasked with process improvement is responsible for maintaining and updating the processes. Organizational process definition is having an organizational standard process in place that all projects use. It also has an, in what is uh, called in the model an information or organizational measurement repository. This is where most pro or all projects would provide back data and measures on the enactment of their projects to be further analyzed and at, at the organizational level. 
Integrated Project Management sits on top of project planning and project monitoring and control. It's the project managers using the standard process to create their projects defined process such that they can then conduct business for the project specifically to meet that project's needs. Risk management, again, is another management process area that sits again on top of project planning, project monitoring, and control, monitoring and control. but it focuses primarily on the discipline of managing risks, having risk mitigation plans, identifying, prioritizing the risks. And lastly, decision and analysis, decision analysis and resolution is the process area that requires that an organization have a formal way to make critical business decisions. Those are all at level three. At level four, we only have two process areas, but they're focused primarily on the project and the organization. OPP, or Organizational Process Performance, is the organization picking which processes will be the appropriate targets to meet their organization's business objectives, quality objectives, productivity objectives, on-time delivery objectives, things of that nature. Then quantitative project management leverages those business objectives and the projects typically adopt them and then use statistical techniques to manage their processes, projects. At level five, we have two process areas. One is OID, or Organizational Innovation Deployment. That is primarily focusing on having the organization provide process improvement proposals quantitatively such that they're targeting different processes and process improvements with new technology, new techniques, but they're quantitatively described such that the organization can understand more quickly that they'll meet a specific goal of improving doing business. Causal analysis and resolution is having the data at level three and four, defect data, quality data, such that, it, such that it's leveraged to understand where are the root causes of the defects that we produce in our products coming from, so that we can go back to that process, fix that process, so that those defects are eliminated in future products that we make. Those are the process areas at level, four, level one through five.